The evolution of our understanding of nutrition and food science has provided us with the ability to actually synthesize both animal and plant proteins. Today, we can produce food and nutrients that are not so commonly found in nature. But this is only the beginning, for in the near future, advanced preserving technologies coupled with computerized biotechnology will make the creation of personalized foods ubiquitous. Many experts hope that progress in this direction might actually provide effective ways of eliminating undesired obesity and other luxury diseases. By the same measure, improved nutrition for children will not only provide the basic requirements for acceptable physical growth, but also for proper intellectual development and overall physical health. It's widely accepted that in the general sense, forthcoming advances in the field of nutrition will greatly enhance all human activity in the 21st century. This man may very likely have saved more lives than anyone else in the 20th century. His name, Norman Ernest Borlaug. He was born in 1914 on a small farm in Cresco, Iowa, in the United States. He studied agronomy at the University of Minnesota, and after graduating, he designed an innovative scientific procedure that would turn out to be a key reason why Malthus's predictions would not come true. In fact, Borlaug showed the world that it was very possible indeed to feed every person on the planet. The story began in 1942, when Borlaug was chosen to head an agricultural project in Mexico. It so happened that in the early years of the 20th century, wheat exports were a major source of income for Mexico. But around 1910, wheat blight, an especially pernicious fungus, started wreaking havoc on the harvest. That would change once Borlaug took action. In the 40s and 50s, experts in cross-pollination techniques essentially followed a golden rule. All plant varieties of the same type were sown at the same time, in the same type of soil, and under the same climatic conditions in which the finished product would later be harvested. But Borlaug was in a hurry. Wheat blight was ravishing the crops at record speed, and there simply wasn't time for tradition. The rules had to be broken. The techniques that we used, uh, what we call shuttle breeding, selecting in the, uh, populations after the crosses, the segregating populations, the best plants under two widely different uh, environmental conditions. For example, planting them in the uh, uh, Yaqui Valley in the state of Sonora when the days were getting shorter, taking the best plants from these populations with the best grain and shuttling them, transferring them back for growing a second generation each year in the high valleys of central Mexico, in Toluca, when the days are getting a little longer, picking the best plants and moving them back to Sonora. If by so doing, this shuttle breeding, we cut the time to produce a new disease-resistant variety in half compared to what it was uh, that was being used everywhere else in the world. Instead of 10 years, we cut it to four and a half or five. But not only that, 
Borlaug developed a variety of wheat that was totally resistant to blight and which could be grown in any kind of climate, at any altitude, at any time of the year. This was a strain that grew closer to the ground and had thicker stalks. The harvest proved much more resistant to the effect of both wind and rain, and the seeds generated more stalks and more spikes. Norman Borlaug's discoveries contributed to the improvement of grain harvests in other parts of the world, too. Many millions of people were saved from starvation, especially in India and Pakistan. In fact, that was the beginning of what later would be called in the 1970s, the Green Revolution. For his far-reaching research, Norman Borlaug was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1970. At this particular moment in history, Norman Borlaug's experiments may be the most important step ever taken on the long road towards eradicating hunger in the world. Despite the Green Revolution, however, there exist a number of ecological abuses that do not easily lend themselves to simple solutions. Many critics cite irreversible damage to the planet's biodiversity and environmental contamination resulting from the prolonged use of fertilizers. There is also another issue of particular complexity. Many environmentalists see Borlaug's work as the beginning of what they consider one of the most potentially dangerous threats facing humanity in the 21st century, genetically modified foods. These fields in Mexico belong to the International Center for the Improvement of Corn and Wheat, known by its Spanish acronym as the CIMIT. This is where the world's most advanced research is carried out on genetically altered grain. Products containing wheat and corn amount to nearly 25% of the total caloric intake consumed in many developing countries. One of the many objectives of the CIMIT is to discover ways to improve the cultivation of these basic foodstuffs through the creation of new varieties that can resist disease, withstand devastating weather conditions, and generally thrive better than their existing counterparts. Plant that performs like this one in an heavy drought condition when controls are performing more or less like this. And this is not just one plant, this is, I can show you thousands of other plants. 